Like what we're doing here at Cube for Two? Click the like and subscribe button to let us know. Also, Cube for Two is now a TCG Player affiliate. Click the link in the show notes for all your shopping needs to help support the channel. Alright guys, let's get started. What's good, Cubers? It's your boy Matt, and today I'm going to answer hopefully a lot of your questions. One of the most frequent questions I get is, Matt, how many copies of a burn spell do I need to run in my cube? Matt, how many copies of this combo piece do I need to run in my cube? Matt, how many cantrips do I need? Matt, how many one drops do I need? And so today we're going to take a deep dive, we're going to do some light math, and I'm going to explain to you how to control the variance inside your cube. Oddly enough, recently Mark Rosewater published an article that I'm going to link in the show notes below on variance. And the idea that low variance means that the same decks perform the same way every time. And that high variance means that you don't have the same decks every time or they don't perform the same every time. And so different players like different types of environment. And he graphs the four environments on this chart right here. He graphs them based on variance and based on choice. So choice for us in cube has to do with power level inside of packs. And we can talk more about that later. In fact, I'll even link my video on how to power down and even out the power level of your cube. But we're not gonna talk about choice today. I wanna talk about variance. And Mark said that there were several advantages to lowering the variance inside your cube. I.e. that decks and games play out more similarly. So like the idea that the aggro deck is available in draft most of the time or the control deck shows up a lot of the time. And that low variance environment hinge on small game details and reward experience. Spikier players like low variance environments because skill matters more rather than what you happen to top deck or what you happen to scoop in the draft. And so I'm just going to go ahead and be up front and say that while I don't consider myself a super spiky player, I do like a more consistent environment. And I don't want my drafters trying to draft a deck that is available one draft, but then the next time we sit down, they attempt to draft it, but the cards don't show up or the deck's not there. I don't want to punish my drafters for knowledge of the cube or for taking a leap into a deck that doesn't show up. And then at the end of the draft, they've got a bunch of jank or something that's really disconnected. So by lowering the variance, I try and help support them in the deck that they want to build. Let me show you a sample of a standard deck, and we'll use it as a jumping off point to talk about variants. This is Mono Red Cavalcade from current standard, uh, right before rotation, before Theros, Theros Beyond Death hits uh, this Friday. I want to point out the number of one drops inside this deck. They run 10. This is not an accidental number. They run 10 so that they'll have a one drop in their opening hand. It is vital for this aggro deck to have a one drop on turn one. And by running 10 one drop creatures, they have a 75% chance of having that one drop on turn one. Now you might be wondering how I got to that number. And the answer is, is that I used something called hypergeometric calculations. And I'm not gonna get too deep into the math. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to worry about the math. There's a website to help you with it. You'll see screenshots from it here, and I'll link to it uh, again in the show notes below. So let's punch in our numbers on our hypergeometric calculator and see where we're at. Okay, so here's our calculator. First, I wanna look at population size. That's the size of the deck. Our standard deck was 60 cards. Inside the standard deck, there are 10 one drops. We draw an opening hand of seven cards and we want one of those one drops in it. Then we hit the calculate button and we realize that we have a 74% chance of having one of those one drops in our opening hand, which makes our deck reasonably consistent because three fourths of the time we're gonna be dropping a creature on turn one. So we can take this and then reapply it to cube. Let's look at the MTGO cube, for example. The MTGO holiday cube played eight red one drops. So in this holiday cube, there are eight options for us to draft with 
one exception, and that is that Goblin Welder is not really an aggressive one drop, it's for a different deck, so let's get rid of that one. If we get rid of Goblin Welder and we draft all seven of these one drops in the draft, when we build our mono red deck, we have a 77% chance of having one or more of these in our opening hand. There's just one problem, and that is that the MTGO cube is 540 cards. And this drastically changes the math for hypogeometric calculations. This is where we can start applying that math we applied on the standard deck to our personal cubes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go back to our stat sheet, shall we? Let's punch in the size of the MTGO cube. It's 540 cards. But we don't use the whole cube every draft. Instead, we draw a sample size of 360 cards. That's an eight man pod. So if there are seven one drops in the whole cube for red aggro, but we only use 360 cards, what are the odds that all seven one drops are even available? It's act it's 5%. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 5%. There's a 5% chance that seven of those one drops show up. So it's not gonna happen. In the MTGO Holiday Cube, red aggro is not possible to draft, or I should say good consistent red aggro is not possible to draft. The odds of you getting the requisite one drops to have a play on turn one in that environment are just next to nothing. So as a result, red aggro in that cube becomes a trap. And that's what we as cube designers want to avoid. We want to avoid archetypes that are a trap. Now, let's take a minute and look at my cube really fast. These are the red one drops that I run. I have eight red one drops. So that automatically puts me a little better off than the MTGO Holiday Cube to begin with. But I don't actually just have eight red one drops. I also run some other one drop options. I run hybrid cards like Figure of Destiny, Rakdos Cackler, and even Signal Pest. These cards not only increase the density of one drops possible for mono red aggro, it also increases the density of one drops for my other aggressive colors as well. But let's just stick with mono red aggro for now. So let's do the math for my cube. My cube is 416 cards and 11 possible one drops. So what this means again is that we're only gonna use 360 cards of the cube for my eight man pod. So we pull those 360 cards and I wanna know the odds of nine of those 11 one drops being available. This would mean the mono red aggro player could try and get seven or eight of the nine and not have to necessarily get all of the one drops. And actually they have an 82% chance of having nine or more one drops available inside the draft, which means that the mono red aggro deck really is a viable consistent archetype inside of my cube. I don't want you to think that I'm trying to shame you into playing more one drops or playing more aggro, but I do like that hypogeometric calculations lets us measure how consistent and possible those decks really are so we don't create traps for our drafters. As a matter of fact, I support aggro in the Mardu colors. So if we adjust our spreadsheet for just my Mardu one drops, this is where we end up. 416 cards, we're gonna pull out 360, but I have 23 possible one drops in white, black, and red. What are the odds that 18 of those one drops are available in a draft? 92%, which means that my cube actively supports at least two aggressive decks per draft, and I like my environment that way, as do my drafters. You don't have to build your environment this way, but if there's nothing else you take from this video, this is the simple statistic. If you want your players to have an effect in their opening hand, like mana dorks, cantrips, aggressive one drops, they need seven in their deck to have a 77% chance. So if you're only running seven copies of an effect in your cube, they need all of them. And that's extremely hard to do. You have to increase your density. These kind of calculations, like I just said, can apply to other aspects of your cube as well. I also use it to help me calculate the number of mana dorks I want in my cube. 
At 416 cards, I have 10 pieces of one drop ramp, therefore there's an 80%, 86% chance of eight or more one drop ramp sources being available in a draft. If your cube is at 540 cards, you need 14 sources of one drop ramp to maintain that rate, which means if you're at 540, suddenly cards like Gilded Goose become auto includes. And that's something else I think that drafters miss. They look at a card like Gilded Goose and they go, ah, oh, it's not as good as Birds of Paradise, I don't want it. But the fact of the matter is your cube is 540 cards and so you have to include Gilded Goose just to get to the correct number of playables for the green ramp deck to be supported in draft. I'm willing to bet for most of you that if you apply hypogeometric calculations to your cube or if you use the calculator or if you just want to use the simple idea of seven in the deck is a 77 percent chance you'll realize that most of you need more cantrips in your cube because your blue decks don't have enough card draw and most of you will realize that cards like kiki jiki aren't viable in your cube because your cube is too big for both kiki jiki and splinter twin to have a high chance of being available in the same draft and you should just pull those kind of combo cards out of big cubes because the deck's just never going to come together. Well, that's going to do it for today, cubers. If you like this kind of video, if you like this kind of topic, if you want me to go more in-depth with more complicated cube ideas like this, just let me know in the comments below. If you want me to talk more about high choice and low choice environments, please feel free to let me know that in the comments below as well. I want to give a shout out to the guys on the cube brainstorming discord for putting me on hypogeometric calculations and a shout out to Pixel for his article on Reddit months ago which really spoke to me and really changed the way that I constructed my cube. Be sure to like and subscribe, it's one of the best ways to support the channel. Catch me on Twitter, at Cube for Two, and as always and until next time, shuffle up and keep cubing my friends.